everyone, welcome back. And our topic for today is sharpen your saws and four key ways in which we can achieve this successfully. This particular topic has been on my mind for a while now and I have just been digesting it. And I am so super excited that that is what we are going to be talking about today. There is one key tool that highly productive people have adopted that made them more successful in all their endeavors in life. And what is that key? The key is that they have been able to master how to sharpen their saws consistently. That is the key. There are a lot of definitions to sharpening the saw or sharpening your own saw. But the one we are going to focus more on today is our productivity. When it comes to sharpening the saw, there are different things to consider here. But it all boils down to one single thing, one key thing. What is that thing? It is you. Sharpening your soul is basically taking good care of yourself and consistently investing more in your own growth or personal development. When you have a soul and you keep using it every time over and over again without sharpening it, without taking good care of it, what happens to it? It becomes dull, it becomes weak, it becomes useless. That is a saw. The same is applicable to our individual lives. Our saws need to be sharpened so that we can have a sound understanding or knowledge of our purpose, more clarity, and also perform excellently in all spheres of our lives. When you are sharpening your saw, you are focusing more on becoming better. And you are focusing more on becoming a better version of yourself in all spheres. Now, we are going to look at the four key ways in which we can sharpen our souls successfully. And the four key ways are spiritually, physically, mentally, and emotionally. These are the four key ways in which we all can sharpen our souls successfully. And the first one we are going to talk about today is, of course, spiritually. When we are talking about the spiritual way of sharpening our souls, it has to do with having a fellowship and a relationship with God. And as Christians, spending more time in God's presence is everything. It helps us to become more broken. It helps in keeping our flesh and body under control. And it also helps in renewing our mind spiritually and also transforming our lives tremendously. And with that, in everything we do, we are being conformed to the image of Christ. Romans 8, 29. As Christians, Jesus is our identity and he lives his life through us. And that is the main purpose, just to be like him in our daily walk, in everything we do, to learn from him and also ask the Holy Spirit to help us or to lead us right to do his will every time. And the truth here is that God actually uses everything to shape us and also to sharpen us. And the transformation that we want, the key transformation starts from the inside of us and it radiates on the outside. Cultivate the habit of spending more time in God's presence, studying his words consistently and applying it to your day-to-day -day activities or life. And it is also advisable to spend at least one hour a day when it comes to fellowshipping with God. This is a wonderful moment. This is an amazing moment. The moments that you have this father and daughter talk, father and son talk, it's just an amazing moment. If you can't do it during the day, you can actually do it in the night. Personally, I love doing it in the night. And if you feel you can't do one hour, you can go 30 minutes and take it up from there. But it is just the best thing to do. What happens at that particular moment cannot be compared to anything else. It is such a special moment. There's a whole lot to learn and unlearn. And there's a whole lot to pack and unpack. It is a moment that you continue to cherish for the rest of your life. You know, having a personal relationship with God without distraction, without anything, is everything. It is indeed a blessing. This helps in recharging your spiritual tank and battery. And you know, the peace, the strength, the confidence, the rest, the comfort, the clarity, the understanding, the power that comes from fellowshipping and spending more time in God's presence can never be compared to anything else. Never. It is such an amazing moment. A beautiful moment with beautiful ambience. Can never be compared to anything else. 
because that is where you get the light and the life from. This is the moment you are handling over your fears, your anxieties, your battles, everything over to him in replacement for a perfect peace, for joy, for rest on all sides. And after that, what comes? You are filled with a heart of gratitude for all the beautiful things he has done, for answered prayers, for clarity, for wisdom, for understanding, for strength, for grace, for his mercies, for his love, for his compassion, a whole lot. So what are you looking for? Sharpening your soul spiritually is the beginning of everything. That is the beginning, not even physically, not even emotionally, not even mentally, because the spiritual dominates the physical. So sharpening your soul spiritually is the beginning of everything. And the moment you are ready and you seek to understand his will for your life, you get everything. That is it. Sharpening your soul spiritually is also a time of reflection, refreshing and rejuvenation. Yes. And now taking it deeper and deeper spiritually. One of the key things that God desires from us most is evangelism. And you don't have to go to every house knocking on their doors. There are different ways in which you can do this. You can draft a message on your phone and send to a couple of people every week. Give them a call. Those people need to know what God has done in your life and that this same God can also turn their whole life around as well. Just make sure you do your part. In a week, you can send to like maybe 10 people, even if they respond or not. Just make sure you do your part. And after doing your part, the Holy Spirit will take it up from there. That is one of the biggest ways to sharpen your soul spiritually. And there is a whole lot of blessing that comes with doing this. Great blessing. That comes with doing this in your place of work restaurant anywhere as you are led just do it do not hold back do it and hand everything over to the holy spirit to do his job the second way to sharpen our soul is physically when it comes to sharpening your soul physically there's a whole lot here your health matters a lot it has to do with eating right, sleeping right, having enough exercise, and taking good care of your body. Take time off for yourself. Spend some time alone or with your friends and family. Go for vacation if you have the time to do that. In fact, you need to create a time to do that. Not if you have the time. Create a time for that. You can learn new skills and devote some time to yourself. This helps in increasing your own personal productivity. Try as much as possible to listen to a lot of edifying music. I love listening to music so much. I love music. Get to the spa if you can. And if you can't afford the spa, just fill your bathtub with water and enjoy yourself. It's as simple as that. Just make sure you are taking good care of yourself. When you adopt all these methods, you are sharpening your souls physically. Take a lot of water, rest, enjoy yourself, relax. Take good care of yourself. I have a couple of things that I personally do every week to de-stress. You can go for a swim. There are a lot of things you can do just to make sure you take good care of yourself. The third way is mentally. You need to sharpen your sores mentally. In the world that we have right now, a lot of people are suffering from one mental health or the other and all this can be avoided or managed if necessary steps are taken as soon as possible now how can you sharpen your soul mentally the first point here is prayer prayer is very important some people might say prayer yes prayer is important you need to cultivate the habit of surrounding everything that has to do with your life your thoughts your brain everything with the blood of Jesus, wrap it around the word of God every day. Not even every day, every second, every minute, every time. Wrap it around the word of God. Wrap it around the blood of Jesus. It is very important. The word works. The blood works. Do not let anyone deceive you. It works. The word works. The blood works. It works wonders. <laughs> it works. And the next point 
make sure you surround yourself with positive people. When it comes to sharpening your soul mentally, surround yourself with positive people, not negative people. Positive people, real positive minded people with positive attitude. You need those people around you. These people will encourage you, will motivate you, will support you. They have great role to play in your life. Find things to be grateful for always. Think about everything, every beautiful thing that God has done for you. Be grateful for everything. Read a lot of inspiring books. Nothing else matters at that moment. All that matters is you and your thoughts. That's all. I love reading a lot. And I have lots of books that I read daily, after work, before work, every time. And I have a couple of books that I read during my free time. And I have some here today to show you. And if you like it, you can as well go ahead and get them. The first one that I have here today is by Bruce Wilson. And that is Secrets of the Vine. Secrets of the Vine. So small like this. Secrets of the Vine by Bruce Wilson. That's the first one. And the second one is The Battle Plan for Prayer Life. The War Room. Yay! I love this so much. The Battle Plan for Prayer Life. And the third one that I have here is What on Heart Am I Here For by Rick Warren. So this is also a good book. And the next one I have here is The Confidence Woman by Joyce Meyer. This is also one of my books. I love this so much. And I have um, this here. I have this. I love reading this every time. Benny Hinn. Then I have The Brave by Dr. Iret. And I also have Favored. This is a bomb. And this is also important battlefield of the mind this is also important those are the couple of books that i have here i have a lot but i just brought few to show you and i also have here with me this book by dindel sesto shift your thinking 200 ways to shift your thinking this is an amazing book as well and i have this book by franklin with me the fasting edge this is also an amazing book to refresh in your thoughts and of course my own books the shift we have the shift here and we have greatness is in you if you need a copy of my books you can get them on amazon just search for Okwe Adibayo and it will pop up and you can get yourself some copies okay so these are just few of my books that i brought here today just to share with you and if you like it you can go ahead and get yours. And apart from reading inspiring books, you can as well find that thing that you are more passionate about and do more of it. If you love writing, if you love singing, if you love reading, there are a lot of things, you know, that you can do. Find that thing that you are more passionate about and do more of it. You can also take a day off, most especially maybe during the weekend. You know, just make sure that you are in a positive frame of mind surrounded by positive people and when you do all this this will help you to become more mentally prepared for every step of your life or journey in life without being drained and the last one is emotionally when we are talking about the emotional aspect we are talking about your marriage even if you're single your friends your true friends your spouse your relationship that is what we are talking about here and it is very important for you to spend more time with your true friends most especially even if you are married your spouse is your best friend spend more time with your spouse pray together play together do things together cook together there are so many things that you can do together that will help dry off any unnecessary emotional thoughts that you might have. Find that time for each other, most especially if you are married. There will not always be time, but you have to create or find that time for each other. Now, let me share this with you. I wanted some attention from my husband and my husband wasn't giving me the attention 
And what did I do? I picked up one or two tropillos and I threw it at him. Of course, that is a sign that, oh, this girl needs my attention. And he has to give me the attention because he knows that if he does not give me the attention that I want, I'll keep distracting him. Okay? It might look as if it's nothing, but it is something. Think about the old times that you started and how God has brought you thus far. Another important thing to do here is to have a date or lunch date with your spouse or your friends maybe once or twice a week and go to any nice restaurant, talk about how the week went just to unwind. This is also very important when it comes to bonding together and it will also help relieve you of any unnecessary stress, unnecessary emotional stress that you might have been having. You can also join any sports club of your choice. This also helps tremendously and another thing here is this you have to make sure that you get rid of every toxic or negative people that you might have around you because the truth is when it comes to your life your joy your happiness your progress your development everything you just have to be intentional no sentiments here if you live your life on sentiments you are heading for a big problem so you just have to be intentional about what you want for your life. Try as much as possible to surround yourself with positive people. Stay away from anything that has to do with gossip, envy, backbiting, and hatred. All this drains your energy. If you have been struggling with any of this, just pray to God for forgiveness and for strength. At one point or the other in our individual lives, we all struggle with one thing or the other. But the truth here is this. This doesn't come from what people think about you or how people treat you. This comes from you knowing who you are in God and what God says about you and also believing what God says about you. Why also living your life according to his will and resting upon his great promises, your joy, your life, your peace, your happiness can only be found in god and finally you can also join any community outreach projects or programs this will help you to also spread love everywhere and i could still remember vividly when i was still working as a part-time with red cross i was able to go to different places that i never even thought existed in the united states with my team driving down far to those places you know it changed a lot of perspectives for me and that encouraged us to also start our own non-profit organization you know just this random act of kindness to people goes a long way and it also creates this peace inside of you you need to adopt the habit of sharpening your own souls consistently it is very important it is your life and you have to value it you have to value that life that you've been given okay and we have come to the end of today's topic on where inspires if you find this helpful in any way please leave a comment below and click the like button and if you're new to my channel thank you for subscribing to my channel and i will see you again with another beautiful inspiring video and until then cultivate the habit of sharpening your source consistently for a better you and a better life.